Okay, well thank you so much for uh, watching this tutorial. Hopefully it'll help you figure out how to make a graph in Excel. I'm using Excel 2007 and any other version that you might be using should have some similarities that hopefully you can figure out as you go. Once you've entered your data, um, you can enter your data in either of two ways as you're making a line graph here. Then you're going to select that data. And so that's what I've done. That's why it was highlighted a different color. You select that data and then you go ahead and go up to insert and then I like to choose a scatter graph, a scatter with straight lines. You select that and voila, a graph comes up. Now the reason I do this is because it allows you to change your axes down here and gives you some flexibility. Um, I've set this to zero and it w works better that way. On the line graph it doesn't really let you change your axes very much. Well, what you can see here is you see we've got this very large uh, line. It's going straight up. Seems like great data. Problem is we have not set this axis to zero and so this data is not telling a very um, reliable story because it's not really uh, giving us our beginning point. So what I do is I right click on this, I come back here and I go to format axis. I click fix on this axis option and I select all that, throw a zero in there and then hit close and voila. What do we got? We got zero to 70. Wow, our line looks like a little blip on the screen now, but you know what? That's a lot more realistic. Okay, one of the things I like to do is maybe change the color of my line so it'll show up a little bit better and and you can kind of see it has a little angle there. One of the things that's nice is we want to see maybe that angle a little bit in more detail. We can do this. We can right click on the line itself and say add trend line. Now older versions of Excel aren't going to have this, but this is a kind of a fun feature. And then I'm going to kind of go backwards in time, so to say. I want to see where this is going to strike my axis back here, okay, my y-axis. And so I've got about 125 or so. Um, that I've got to go back and so let me go ahead and put in 125 there hit close and voila you see how this line is kind of trending backwards now at least it lets us see a little bit more the um, the increase that's taking place now this legend over here really isn't too helpful in a line graph it might be good in the bar graph but we're gonna get rid of that for right now and then we like to have labels right we need to have labels we need to have a title to make this a good graph so what we gotta do is we gotta come up here to um, our layout and then look at this we're going to select axis titles primary horizontal axis title title below axis well what do we have down here we have pressure as pressure increases we can see that the mass is also going to increase oops all right so we've got our pressure in kilopascals we're going to do the same thing over here with our mass and of course our mass is unit double click in there our mass is unit is in grams and so now we've got that going and we've got some labels looks pretty good our title obviously is not good yet so let's throw in a good title there in this case we want to say something that's very descriptive and also um, you know it might be long but it doesn't we don't want to get too long so descriptive but brief um, and I'm saying the correlation of pressure and mass in a, in a bottle when air is added. And that pretty much describes what's happening in this graph and what, uh, what we're looking at. Okay, so we've got a pretty good looking graph here. We've got zero axis, we've got our, our labels with units on it. Uh, you know, one other thing we might be able to do on here is we might be able to actually uh, show our um, data labels. So look at that. We can go ahead and throw some data labels on there. Um, we can move that a little bit. Maybe want them to be above the line so that uh, people can see them a little bit more. That's kind of nice. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and say we're good. This is a nice looking graph. Guess what? Now we're almost done. All we got to do is throw this thing into a Word document. So what I like to do is just Control C, which is a copy, but we can just do this as well. Copy. Go over to our Word document. We will control V or paste it in, however you like to do that pacing process. We can stretch it a little bit, say, hey, look at our graph, nice and big and cool. And then we got to do something. We're going to go ahead and put in a <clears throat> uh, text box so that we can uh, write about it because every graph needs to have an excellent text box. We're just going to choose a simple text box. Oh, well, let me undo that for a second. got to click below first before I do that. All right, so insert text box, simple text box. We're going to stretch this guy out to kind of match what our graph size is. And looks like it's working a little bit there. All right, so now we're going to throw in some, let's throw in some text here. So we want to have a um, title that, or not a title, but a description that's going to be um, totally explanatory of 
what it is that we're doing in this graph. Um, so that if I had only seen um, this graph, that I would be able to actually understand what was going on um, in the experiment, even if I didn't know anything else about the experiment. So what I'm doing here is I'm uh, typing in some material um, that does that. So although the change seems small, it should be noted that most of the mass present is from the bottle and syringe that were used to, to measure the pressure. If the air alone were measured, yeah, we're not spelling too well here, the differences would seem much more significant. The increase in mass is due to the added air, and there is a direct correlation between pressure and mass, as would be expected. Okay, so make sure I don't have any spelling errors in there. I probably do. Um, Basically, I've kind of taken note of everything that's there. Uh, I tried to make sure that that uh, explanation was thorough, and uh, I think we've done a pretty good job there. So there you go. Uh, voila, you can get rid of this. If you don't like the little box, you can uh, right-click on that, go down to Format Text Box, and say, you know what? I do not need a line at all. Get rid of that line. Now it looks pretty good. You want to put like figure one in here or something like that. That's always uh, kind of a classy touch. If you have several figures, kind of looks nice. Uh, maybe you think it's a little too small. Let's get our font size uh, up a little higher. Then that would be another good thing to maybe do. Um, you know, it, there's a lot of things you can do just to make it kind of look nice and, and crisp. You could, uh, you could do a bunch of stuff. But I think they, you've pretty much got the idea of what we want to do. And uh, I hope this has been a helpful tutorial for you. And we are going to get out of here. Thank you much.